One more comment on Joshua. See my earlier poem, Compassion, Requiem for a Dead Lover. October 5th. The ghosts are always there, whether they dwell in limbo or are gone, for new adventures in samsara. And that's the miracle of spiritism. Although a loved one long ago has left and taken up a new life burden, it is possible to have subconscious contact with her soul. She will respond, her depths of soul are always possible to stir and to recall to life with contacts of an earlier incarnation. This is difficult, absorbing and subduing stuff that never can be thoroughly investigated, only nosed on and discovered hopelessly to be an entrance to eternity that only leads to one more door that opens into other, deeper, more eternities. The inseparableness of dreams and reality. The highest possible of dreams is naturally just a dream of love, but could be nothing but a dream of you. So long now have I loved you, and yet you are so far away, unreachable and unattainable, not like a statue, but more like an angel, and yet are you closer to me every day. How is this paradox to be explained? It cannot be explained, but only understood. We know each other better than tough lifetime couples, and yet have not lived together for a moment. Flashlights have our golden moments been of rare togetherness, but flashlights are more blinding and efficient than unending days of boring greyness. In this lifetime we have flashed through many lifetimes as if it was time to bring them all together in a single moment of explosive truth to let love once for all and definitely triumph in a bliss of irreversible imperishableness. The passion of your hair, more brilliant and unfathomable in its richness than the shimmering profundity and luster of the Milky Way, the lights and colours of your gorgeous hair is food enough for an eternity of sleepless nights, but is my passion worthy your divinity? Your passion speaks a language far more eloquent than any body language could express, and I must try to match it with a similar sincerity. But such ambition is impossible for mortal limitations. That's the problem of our passion. It is out of bounds, and therefore I am by respect reduced to silence. But rather call it awe, and let another sense take over, that extraordinary power of the other senses than the five, since that is what we need to understand and get to know our love. So let us dwell for all eternity in outer worlds than this so sorrowful, mundane and trivial one, with all its most pathetic bodily and sorry limitations, to stretch out with the ambition of our love for fruits of even stranger trees than the forbidden ones of knowledge and of right and wrong, to celebrate together that intimacy with stranger secrets of eternity and life and death than ever could be properly expressed by human passion. Into the bottom of despair, when the storm gathers and things get rough, and darkness besieges you, strangling your life, surrounding you with constant terror of outrageousness, and turning all your daylight into night, driving you hard into cornered defeat, losing everything hopelessly, even your way. You have nothing left and no salvation to turn to. But even when all beyond all hope is lost, there remains in the darkness of hopelessness someone to love who will think of you kindly. And that knowledge is all you need to survive, almost anything, even the horrors of terror. And never there was such a total despair and complete utter darkness that love did not always shine through it, dispensing of all that was just in the way. The Talisman we have a secret pact that no one can begrudge us, since no one knows about it, 
or could even understand it, since it is within ourselves, the secret understanding of a higher sense of wisdom in a total alien language of pure feeling, sensitivity and touch that make us far more vulnerable than most people who would judge our extra sensitivity a nervous problem of a schizoid kind, while it in fact is like a talisman, more costly than all riches of the earth, and as a love affair and language much profounder and much higher than all commonplace communication, and we share it with some dead ones who are still alive beyond the grave, and much more so than all those normal people who would never understand an extrasensory perception of a language of pure feeling that belong to more romantic times of depth and pathos and compassion than has ever been in use again since it was buried and forgotten with the tears of many tragic poets and composers. The Dark Sides of Beauty Many are distraught by that tremendous melancholy of those sentimental moods and melodies that fill the golden music of Chopin and makes it overwhelming, and he was a sick divinity indeed, just crying all his life for all his lost engagements, all the girls that wouldn't have him for his poverty, or for George Sand who just maltreated him and made his illness worse by mental cruelty. But there is one more side to it, an even darker one, the passion and the storms, the raving fury of the world's political injustice, and that's where you have the universal illness. It was not Chopin's, but all the world's. His Polish motherland was cruelly occupied, suppressed, stamped down and ruined by the Russians, and for that Chopin's heart bled itself to death not from relentless harm and righteous fury, but from bottomless compassion. What he did was to cry all his soul out and to waste it in a pathos of wild, mad and bitter sorrow with no ends, no cure and nothing else for it but hopelessness, like in the case of any bolting horse that can't be stopped except by her own heartbreak. That's the darkness, the supremest terror, the compassion that can find no end, no bottom to its sorrow, and no choice but to continue crying out forever. True love undefined, even the heaviest planets of the highest density and solidity are just flying around. True love is never to let down and never put down. You just can't pinpoint it. It has its own laws, never to be violated, never to be understood, and least of all defined. You just obey them, follow them, and close your eyes to learn that you are blind, which is what you are, a child astray and drifting far away, in no man's land in darkness, flying just around with nothing stable, nothing to depend upon and nothing possible to cling to except love itself, the perfectly supreme capriciousness that has to be obeyed or simply left alone, and then you are alone indeed. The love of paradoxes. While at the same time we are so much like each other, we are totally each other's contraries, unmatchable irrevocably with each other, while we cannot do without each other, you dependent on continuous company, me dreadfully dependent on the freedom of my solitude, while also you need, most of all, your space of freedom, and I wallow in that sadomasochistic social addiction which just burns me out like you are burnt out by all that you loathe and cannot do without. It's one of those impossible equations, Love is never mathematical. You need your freedom and your loneliness and company, and I need solitude and freedom and addiction to all that which harms my work and limits my expansion. Are we both then self-destructive as creative artists? Yes, in some ways, since we need to be alone and free but are dependent on each other, 
and must do without each other totally except as friends whose love is far too strong to be allowed except as spiritually roaring beyond all control and that is never satisfactory no matter how much we are soaring beyond space and time in madness of our sanity of love which gives us nothing but a whole eternity of sleepless nights. Life's gift is only to be given, never to be taken. I am with you on the dark side of the moon, where no one sees your tears, but you shall never cry alone, not even in that total and eternal darkness, for I am the light that shines up even that most hopeless dark side of the moon. The cure is to let go, forget about yourself, and concentrate on anything that isn't you. It's your responsibility to life, to love all life, and not just be alive yourself. You are the fountain of your life that spreads your life to others and should not keep life just to yourself. Old people may be boring, but they know what life is all about, or else they would not still be living. They would not have lived so long if they were not familiar with the knowledge that your life was given you to give to others, not just to enjoy it for yourself. For there is no more certain misery, unhappiness, entrapment and despair than to get stuck in bleak self-centeredness, a one way only down to hell, while life is only in embracing it with love and giving it away with constant care for others as long as you live. A greeting to Zoya for Diwali. Sorry I can't join you. We are stuck here in the darkness, the notorious depressivity of Scandinavia, where now begins the dreariest season of the year, around the Halloween, when most of the year's suicides occur, and many people die for nothing, maybe just from darkness and depression. In the darkest days we have but seven hours daylight, and the rest is darkness at its densest, thickest and most daunting. But in India the summer will continue still for yet another month, and I will join you there as prices fall after Diwali to enjoy the freshness and the joys of India in the fall when people there are at their very nicest and the harassment of tourists vanish with the dollar tourists while the pilgrims and the lovers faithfully remain who know and love their India. I can't promise to find you in Aligarh, but at least I will give you some greetings from my lovely mountains, Nanda Devi, Annapurna, and of course, the loveliest in the world, the Kanjanjunga. Reduced to silence. When reduced to silence, love still goes on more glowingly and intensively than if it was outspoken, for silent love keeps quiet only to control its fervour, utter honesty and overwhelming truth, sincerity and depth of feeling, to maintain itself and save it for eternity, to keep it burning always with the fullest flame, but the more faithfully in secret. Terms of Trial my concern for you in your melancholy is limitless, complete and hopeless in incurable despair and worry like your own outcrying anguish. But what can we do about it? This benighted situation is not of our making. We are innocent of alien mentalities like suppressing ignorant and parasitic ones and see no solutions else but to cut off the leeches not have anything to do with sick mentalities and just do our own job in peace and quiet, obstinately and in isolation if there is no other choice, although it is both hard and difficult to constantly ward off adversity and struggle against evil winds of no intentional but no less ruinous hostility, of pure indifference, ignorance, stupidity and sloth. What can we do? I'm afraid our only choice is just to keep on working and keep smiling, doing something good out of a hopeless world destroyed by spiritual corruption, poverty and misery. 
from the depths of wilderness, when in the depth of our acquaintance I must question our validity and search a purpose with our flight together in the waste of space in perfect blindness, I find nothing to confirm and validate our union, only the right contrary, impossibilities and arguments against it, but that is the very challenge. We have entered far too deep into each other's souls to extricate ourselves from this immersion, and the fact that circumstances, all of them, cry loudly out against it only makes the fusion more consolidated and increases the attraction of the challenge. So let's just go on in blindness anywhere and stick with cheeky obstinacy to each other, even clandestinely if it so must needs, since we have nowhere else to go. Preferences People with a dark spot like alcoholism, addiction, sexual mistakes and other kinky weird anomalies are usually more human and more interesting than normal ones, of orderly perfection and impeccability, who more incline to ordinariness and being boring, not that you must be extreme and utterly immoral, not to be a bore, but people who have tasted self-indulgence usually have much more interesting human knowledge and experience than all those who just are natural and normal. Give me, therefore, a fanatic or an alcoholic or an addict, and he will be better company than any stable person of position, who knows nothing about man, lives only for himself, and has no love but for his possessions and his self. Audible whisperings around the globe. All I miss is you, since you are all the world to me. What is the world to me with all its riches and careers and fortunes without you, since you alone give any meaning to it? Yes, I miss our midnight conversations and the outcries of our unions, but we shall join hands together once again and hug each other in embraces that will never cease to warm each other for the longest winters and to fill our memories with food for thought, enough for candid tenderness without an end to it. That's all I can devote myself to you in your absence, sentimental and pathetic weaknesses of sad nostalgia, and melancholy to make tigers cry for crocodiles. You are with me and I'm still with you, no matter how extreme the geographic difference is, which problem can't go any worse, which means things can go only better then. Let's hope so, for that is our only comfort. My home is love and there is you. You are its only tenant. No one else was ever willing or invited. So, in brief, my home is you, and all my love is yours. There is no night with any darkness, since there is your light in it and in my life, which shines for you with only you for any splendour. Thus shall this be constantly repeated in my heart and soul and by reciters, as long as there is at all in this world any love to uphold love with for the only sake of love, the only matter in existence worth existing for. Greetings from the Happy Valley, a greeting from the hippie heartland with some legendary places like Manali and Malana, Manikaran and Almora, where the grass grows wild in any quality and even better quality the higher up you get, with permanent communities of hippies of all ages, none too old and none too young, all seemingly completely happy with a paradise of dreams, that is, of daydreams, but of beauty also, since her people tend to be more beautiful the higher up they get. In Manikaran and Malana they can vanish into happiness, since there they have the drug of drugs, Datura, which can place them out of time for two years or forever. It was old Timothy Leary who discovered how the cannabis grew wild around this area in any quality which instigated the first hippie colonies to settle here, which since then constantly have multiplied the last years thoroughly with Israelis. There is nothing wrong with that sort of a carefree life. 
you do no harm to no one, while occasionally the police makes raids to Parvati, Malana and those places, to burn up the harvests of the villagers of cannabis, which ruins them and to no good for anyone. It is a kind of bum life, making you a chronicle outsider, but there is no harm in that as long as you just keep it for a spice. In fact, it has been proved that cannabis can cure a number of diseases that would be considered hopeless otherwise, amongst them chronicle diseases and disorders, often undefinable mysterious ones that thus can be miraculously cured. But let not that spice take over the control of all the food that is your life, for then you waste it, it will then end up to nothing, while a spice should just augment the nourishment, not kill it. Jesus to Mary Magdalene, a speculation in how he might have been thinking. You are my closest friend, perhaps my only friend, and you are safe with that relationship, and there is nothing that can change it ever. Powerless is every slander. You have been enough subjected to that worst humility. A woman's reputation is her only asset and the only thing she has. You were bereft of it completely long before you met me, but instead, and listen carefully, you have acquired something much more to be envied. By your knowledge of so many men, you know them, you have all their souls in your possession, you know man like man can never know himself, and therefore I esteem you higher than the most respectable of women. Therefore you shall be forever under my protection and considered the most honoured among women, second only to my mother, who is just another fallen Mary like yourself. Remember, I am but a bastard out of wedlock, who has taken on myself this messianic mission only since I am the only person qualified to do it. So it is just my responsibility that I have to accept or fail humanity, which would be a much worse deception than to make a king out of this bastard. You are then the sister of my destiny, a bastard seeking comfort in a fallen woman of some prominent experience, and you must admit we match each other well. We do not even need the ceremonies and the superfluous complexities of sex to prove it. And in this my highest possible regard of you two fallen women closest to my heart, I promise you, shall every woman of all ages be secured and blessed, worshipped and protected in my name. The harmony of our music the sunshine of your smile is more than just enough to make my day, more full of glory and delight than any sponsor could, since your good fortune, harmony and happiness is all I care for. It means everything to me, and I can't bear to see your eyes besmirched with tears, your wrinkled front or any sorrow in your being. Light my life with your good company, light up the darkness of my soul with your good influence, light up my energy with the most fervent fire of our love, and light my fire with your trust and smiling friendship, and how can I else but love you, and keep loving you with ever more increasing depth of feeling? Keep me burning like I will keep loving you, and we shall never fail in keeping up the light and harmony we owe to our music. The Pledge Today six months have passed since first you came into my home and since I fell in love with you. I cannot hide it to myself, although I can control it, and my chief concern has ever been to not give you a burden or to hurt you in whatever way. I could do anything for you and have so far been happy to at least do all my best to help you on your way and ease up any difficulties, which of course I gladly will continue to, and as I wrote you on your birthday, I will be to you whatever you would want of me to be, and never violate the limits of your pleasure. The Eternal Flow of Life and Love The flow of life and love can never be arrested, 
no sloth of slow mentality, no ignorance or violence, no government oppression, conscious or unconscious, no bureaucracy or automatic tyranny, no systematic greed or hopeless petty thinking, no autocracy or any dreadfulness of politics, no nuclear scarecrow like some monster of dictatorship, like that Korean booby, and no terrorism, no human vanity and folly, no oppressive ideology of atheistic fundamentalism, like the Chinese imperial state of communism, forbidding all religions except atheism, and persecuting them with force. Not all the weapons in the world, including all the nuclear ones, can stop the naturalness in the flow of life and love, ubiquitously in the universe. Remember, there are just as many suns and stars around the universe as there collectively are grains of sand in every beach and desert altogether in our world. Our sun is just a grain of sand out of this universe of sands, so life must be all round the universe if it is here, not frequently and everywhere, but sparsely. So our life and love are here to stay and to go on continuously forever. Lovers in Limbo my love is all reserved for you, but in that reservation is included such a lot of others, like as if my love of you was something of the very motor that made possible my love for all that lot of others, friends, acquaintances, the family and relatives, and even strangers on my journeys. Such, in fact, have more often than not become my truest friends, nomadic wanderers, adventurers and exiles, like so many fugitive Tibetans here in India, and escaped unsocial refugees from gross injustices in Europe and the Western world, from communism, from Thatcherism, from brutal Bushism and capitalism, and from themselves, the vainest and most desperate escape of all. But they have all somewhere some love that constantly keeps waiting for them no matter how exiled they are, they always have a home at heart to some they hopefully return to. But the truer and profounder their love is, the more it hurts, and the more painful is the enterprise to take it up again. There are so many lovers suffering in limbo, and at present we are two among them. Through the Valley of Shadows Suddenly you woke up in the valley of death's shadows with no light for any guide and nothing for a comfort, only darkness perfectly impenetrable and opaque, like hell itself all of a sudden fallen down to earth. It's only to climb up again the long and dreadful way from bottom of despair, one slow step at a time, with arduous, tortuous labour, patiently and carefully, and never to lose hope and sight of the salvation. Just go on and carry on the unendurability, the burden of the suffering, and you shall be rewarded with the glory of survival and the miracle of life to be able to start living once again with some acquired extra wisdom in addition of experience and of have had the honour of the triumph of the victory and conquest over death with the pure will and power of the soul and personality, the vicissitude of your integrity proved worthy to continue its existence on its own with confidence. Yet another description of love. The limitlessness of love is like continents worth charting, but so much more interesting to study and to learn from since it moves ever variable and changeable like water, flowing constantly with ever-increasing energy, working wonders everywhere of ever-changing kind, constantly renewing itself like an ever-burning phoenix, constantly on flying wings and ever-flying higher towards finer purity and mind and soul, since true love never can be sullied only constantly, miraculously multiplied. <laughs>